Stick it on the roof. My name's Alan Jones. I'm uh, considered a master thatcher. I tend to work with historical thatch as opposed to the modern stuff uh, because there is a difference between modern thatching and traditional and sustainable thatching. So that's one of the things I tend to teach uh, the difference between the two. We have a, an introduction to thatching day. Uh, you can't be a thatcher in a day, but you can have an introduction and you can take the lid off and let people know more about uh, what's involved. In Wales, there is me and David, David Driver. David trained with me. Uh, uh, David and I worked together for nine years and then for five years he also went to, uh, to Somerset and, uh, and worked there. He's come back to Wales now. Uh, we've got a few things to do you know, today, but um, this is the corner of the roof and uh, I'm going to put some on and then uh, you are. <laughs> okay. The difference between modern thatching and traditional and sustainable thatching. Uh, so I'll, I'll make a distinction between those two and uh, we talk, talk, it, talk it through with people. Overhang there, that's good, yeah. And then you can get your left hand in above the temporary. That's 40 it. years I've been doing thatching. Uh, carpenter by first trade. Uh, I got involved 1982 building a reconstructed Iron Age village near where I live in Newport Pems. But being a carpenter, that's what I did. And, uh, and then the owner had me thatch it as well. Otherwise, I was thatching for many years, self-taught. Self uh, when I ended up working on a site in Holland as a... Uh, a chap there was uh, rather amazed I got that far self-taught. So he took me under his wing and I went to Somerset and I got trained properly. That was 40 years ago and I, I, I picked up a bit about it. I've carried on. One of the things we're going to do is put a temporary fixing in to hold the straw in place. And because it's only one layer of straw thick, these pins have a habit of falling out. David will take uh, take you in, in turns and everybody can have a go. There's quite a few, so it's going to be... <laughs> but, you know, you can watch what's going on. We'll, we'll do some fixings and uh, uh, creep up the roof. This is all the bundles of straw ready for the roof. Dav has uh, made them into little armfuls. So I'm just going to choose a couple and start putting them on the roof. First thing I'm going to do is put the knot visible on the surface. So I'm going to use a temporary bond around the corner, a piece of piece of hose pipe. So what I will do, I'm just going to put my hand on it. I'm going to take undo the knot and slip it off the bottom. All right. I'm just going to allow that to just gently fill up that space and it fades out to nothing and then we get a bigger course here. These pins hold it back so we've got a nice square face there. That fades out to nothing and eventually it's going to come round until it's vertical. So I'm just as you can see, gently just coming up because we've got to create some depth before when the next layer goes on, you'll probably tap it up the roof like that bundle I did, I showed you, you know, tap it right up. So we were slowly straightening it up. And then I can pull the temporary across. This is what you'll do, or maybe you'll do the rolly bit as well. Roll it towards you slightly, put your hand in, hold. I'm just holding it there. Then I can move my pins over. Yeah, volunteer, please. Um, so, so I'll get you a nice bundle. Grab that, do we? Yeah, stick that. Stick you can tap him on the ground just to make sure it's all lined up. So, yeah. Spot on, that's it. Straight away. Spot on. <laughs> Round of applause, that was a good one. When you can kind yeah. of see it coming along and stuff like that. Yeah, if you can put your left hand on here. 
match. It's just... And even people who don't even realise. That's it. And now you're ready to put your right hand in as well. And then try and kind of tuck a little bit of it. A lot of it's just having a go and getting to feel for the material. Uh, so we're the only two thatchers, I think, at the minute working in Wales, but over Britain generally, uh, there could be as many as 600 thatchers, which is more than you might imagine. Thatching's still relevant if you've got a historic roof and it needs doing properly. It's part of our heritage, part of our cultural you know, journey through farming through thousands of years. The food and shelter connection, that symbiotic relationship is very important. So now you've thrashed the grain out, right? You comb the weeds and the short straws out, yeah? Spot it on the floor, trim the butts, stick it on the roof. And then you've got grain all over the floor. Okay? Yes. All right, so that's going in here now. And this is your opportunity, should you wish, to discover anything in there that you don't want. Now is the time to take it out. So you can have a look if you want. Keep it all rolling along. There we go. You can see it too. Make a loaf of bread out of that. If somebody says, oh, we've got this crop that will feed you, feed major, I mean, really feed you, and you can use it on a roof, you'd go, whoa, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Traditionally, thatching would have been using cereal crops because cereal crops are grown for food when you've knocked the grain out. Uh, the straw is left behind. It's a byproduct. So you would naturally use the straw uh, for thatching. So that symbiotic relationship between food and shelter is uh, a thing that attracts me to thatching. It makes it more relevant. Not to the top. Uh, today, uh, most thatching tends to be water reed and it's usually imported, which is fine, uh, but it's not the same as the home produced traditional wheat variety, cereal varieties and uh, and techniques employed in using that. Uh, so you've got to look after your historic roofs and do it properly, have the right materials. So you've got to know not only how to use the materials, but how to produce them. Uh, that's, uh, that's a thing with uh, a lot of heritage building. You've got to have the materials to do the correct job with. Only 160 years ago, most roofs in Wales would have been thatched. That's a lot of roofs. You know, people think that it's got very little to do with us, but uh, of course it, it's been part of our cultural upbringing uh, for, for thousands of years. You know, and it's a shame for it to, you know, lose this knowledge. And if you need to know how to do it, then I'm one of the people that you come to to find out. With your right hand, bend it over. Fantastic. Can't believe how much Alan understands. I thought it was quite basic and thought, oh, we'll get on a roof and lay the roof, but uh, no, it's been very good, yeah. I hope, or well, one of the, the important things they'll get out of it is recognising the value of the skills that these people have, and I think that's often underlooked. But they'll also then look at their own buildings differently, and I think that there's a sort of general increase in, in, um, in recognising those values of, of what, we've, what we've got around us, really. I enjoy thatching so much, uh, and I do. Bonkers, isn't it? But um, I, I do. It's it's. No, I'll I'll keep going until I can't do it anymore. It's a bit like farming. It's a way of life. You know, I'm I'm happy to do it as long as I can. I I'll see what happens. I'm 66 now. When I'm 70, I'll thatch a bloody great big roof somewhere, hopefully, and then I might just go right. That's it. Do me in ends. You know, or else I might just 
slowly plod along with it, you know, or do more teaching, you know, or, you know, um, conservation work, sort of like consultation, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm.